How to build rotary encoders using transmissive optical sensors was treated in a previous video. Now I would like to explain the working principle of this simple to build electromechanical encoder. Let's start with this very simple rotary switch composed of a washer and three pieces of wire. One piece of wire is soldered on the washer, which in turn is tightened to a thread that is supported by a piece of a breast tube so that it can be turned by hand. The second piece is connected to ground of a DC voltage source and serves as a wiper pulling the potential at the washer to ground level. Wire number 3 is bent in such a way that a rotary switch is formed. This piece of wire is connected to plus 5 volts through a 1 kilo ohm resistor so that we get a reading of plus 5 volts on the multimeter if the switch is open... ...and 0 volts if the switch is closed. With each revolution the wire makes contact for a couple degrees so that a microcontroller can count the pulses generated by the rotary switch. The switch contacts are made of springy metals, thus when they strike together, they bounce apart several times before making steady contact. That event is recorded with an oscilloscope plot using a time base of 1 millisecond. When the switch gets closed, there is a rapidly pulsed electric current for about 4 milliseconds instead of a clean transition from 5 to 0 volts. Those spikes also appear whenever the switch is opened. Now the signal goes from 0 to 5 volts multiple times until we get a steady high signal. That common problem with nearly all electromechanical switches is called contact bounce. By software we can prevent the microcontroller from treating each pulse caused by the unwanted switch bounces as a sensor event. Only if a signal lasts for at least 50 milliseconds, which is more than 10 times the duration of contact bounce, a transition from low to high or vice versa is treated as switch action. As we can see, the rotary sensor works fine, at least at low rotational speeds. Read more about the drawbacks of electromechanical sensors on the project page. Whenever the sensor is turned back and forth, the microcontroller counts up because the direction of rotation can't be determined with that simple configuration. Let's modify the design of the rotary encoder. Instead of one piece of wire, the rotor of this sensor is composed of three resistors having 560, 1000 and 2200 ohms soldered on a washer. The resistors are glued on a plastics disc to give the rotor a higher stability. One wiper makes steady contact with the washer, pulling the potential to ground. While the second contact is connected to the plus 5 volts pin of an Arduino through a 1 kilo ohms resistor. Same as before, we get a reading of 5000 millivolts, thus 5 volts, whenever the switch is open. If the switch gets closed through the 560 ohms resistor, a voltage divider composed of a 1 kilo ohms and a 560 ohms resistor at 5 volts input voltage is formed. In theory, we get a voltage drop of 1.79 volts across the 560 ohms resistor. The reading is 1867 millivolts, which is within the observational error. As soon as the switch breaks contact, the reading jumps back to 5V... ...while the recorded value is 2507mV as soon as the wire touches the 1 kilo ohms resistor. The voltage divider is now composed of two 1 kilo ohms resistors, by what we get a voltage drop of 2.5V in theory. If opened, the voltage reading is 5000mV again... And when making contact with the 2.2 kilo ohms resistor, we get 3445mV. In theory, we get an output of 3.44V across a voltage divider composed of a 2.2 and a 1 kilo ohms resistor at 5V input voltage. 
The voltage reading is done by a microcontroller through an analog to digital converter. Whenever the rotary switch is closed, the reading at the analog input is either 1.79, 2.5 or 3.44V in theory. As demonstrated, the readings did never meet the theory, which is why the software accepts an error of plus minus 0.3V. Whenever the switch makes contact, the microcontroller can determine what resistor became part of the circuit. After breaking and making contact, the microcontroller can determine if a counterclockwise rotation... ...or a clockwise rotation appeared... ...or if the sensor was moving back and forth, making contact with the same resistor multiple times. Same as before, contact bounds has to be considered in the software code and that physical property sets the limit for the rotational speed of the sensor. A full turn is divided into three steps. With three additional resistors also having 560 ohms, 1 and 2.2 kilo ohms, the full turn is divided into six steps with 60 degrees each. You can also use four unequal resistor types by what a simple piece of wire is a zero ohms device. Have a look at the project page to learn more about suitable resistor values for this type of rotary encoder. This disk is composed of four different resistor types dividing a full turn into eight steps with 45 degrees each. Consider that the maximum rotational speed is decreasing with an increasing number of steps per turn. This rotary encoder is simple to build, the working principle is visible and it is a device that can be used to teach some base knowledge about voltage dividers. Another advantage is that only one input pin is needed to read the encoder by a microcontroller. I will do some experiments in how to use this sensor in a control circuit soon. Thanks for watching and I'll be back!